work to provide a space and resources for discussion of life's greatest questions in the context of faith. And we do this by providing readings and publications which draw upon classic works of literature and connect the timeless wisdom of the humanities with timely issues, as well as sponsoring programs such as this to connect leading thinkers with thinking leaders and engaging the biggest questions of life and ultimately coming to better know the author of the answers. When Jesus began his public career, he claimed to be announcing good news. So what news was Jesus announcing? The news is rooted in Israel's scriptures, not least in Isaiah 40 to 55. The long story would arrive at its goal. The powers of the world would be overcome, and God would take charge of the world in a whole new way. The Gospels presuppose that Jesus is embodying Israel's God, returning in strange, self-giving power. That is the key in which the music is written, but it isn't the tune that's being played. The tune itself is that in and through Jesus, the one true God is becoming king on earth as in heaven. And the ultimate life after death is not a platonic, disembodied immortality, but resurrection life in God's new creation. And that new world began when Jesus came out of the tomb on Easter morning. That's the good news. Something happened then as a result of which the world is a different place. And we are summoned not just to enjoy its benefits, but to take up our own vocations as new creation people, as Sermon on the Mount people, as spirit-filled and spirit-led Jesus followers, bringing his kingdom into reality in our world. Here's the point which we often get wrong. God always wanted to run the world through image-bearing human beings, whether or not they acknowledge him. It's the foundation of a Christian political theology. Doing justice and mercy in office is what counts. And this is where the calling of the church comes in. Jesus said that when the Spirit comes, the Spirit will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. And the way the Spirit will do that is through the witness of the church. Here we have a problem. Because the media have taken that task to themselves, the task of holding governments to account. And they warn the church off the patch because they're now claiming it as their own. But those who follow Jesus must stand on that patch, however uncomfortably, and learn again, painfully as it may be, to speak the truth to power. Our topic tonight is a crucial one at this moment in history. Here in the US, we find ourselves in a time when the daily news conveys anxiety, anger, and most particularly confusion about Christian identity and mission. And so the time is right to consider afresh the news that Jesus brought. God was bringing the long story of Israel to its climax. The inbreaking of the kingdom of God was the consummation of Israel's hopes. This is not an otherworldly message, indeed, Instead, it's a message that announces God's kingdom is coming on earth as in heaven. It's not a story about how we get up to heaven. It's a story about God's tearing open the heavens and coming down. Jesus proclaims that God's kingdom is breaking into this world and transforming it. If God is king, he is king over the whole world. And the coming kingdom of God makes a claim on the wholeness of our lives. What could we do to reshape the life of our communities in such a way that they bear witness to the great grace that is upon us? What must we do in our time to shape the life of our communities in such a way that the world can actually see the power of the resurrection at work? The more fully we live into answering that question, the more we will come to know the good life.